Selamat pagi. That means good morning in Bahasa. Good morning. I was just saying to the little boys who we mentor many little boys and we educate the whole village. Well, not the whole village, 200 people. Some are going off to work in cruise ships and some are going to work at the hotel. Mostly the hotel, lots of people. All right, so I just got a very disturbing call from my lifelong friend, Ruby Azrak. When I was fucked, I mean, when Fat Farm was five years in, every business takes five years, and losing a shitload of money, Ruby came along and he licensed first my shoes, which became that Fat Classic that I talked about earlier. And then he, it's a good story I'll tell you later about Ruby and the Fat Classic. Uh, but Ruby, helped me and we became partners. He became a licensing uh, director. He took uh, a percentage of the licenses he made and he made them in his community. And I made friends in that community. I would go to his house for Sabbat. I mean, we really spent a lot of time together. Every day we were joined at the hip. This was my best friend every day, still is. So when I got married, he and maybe, God knows, the whole community came to St. Bart's. Buster Rhymes? Is that Buster or Nicky? My dogs are Buster Rhymes and Nicki Minaj. Two dogs I saved on the road. Two Bali dogs. Anyway, so Ruby and the whole Syrian Jewish community came to my wedding in St. Bart's. To this year, 20 some odd years later, the entire Syrian community goes to St. Bart's. They get yachts and so many friends that I, and, and people who I love and my kids have grown up with visit St. Bart's every Christmas when I got married on the 22nd of Christmas. So now I started a tradition in the Jewish community, in the Syrian Jewish community, to visit that island for holiday. But they are my, my dear friends. I worked with all of them, Dr. J's and Jimmy Jazz and SMDs and the bags and the belts and the light and the leather. And, but anyway, these are my Jewish partners from the Syrian Jewish community, not from anywhere else, but we're talking about Ruby, who called me. He's like, Russell. You know, sometimes on a, he should be in the house, uh, Shabbat, but Ruby's one of the few who calls me a little bit, he's been drinking. Why would you go behind a, a racist, horrible Kanye West after everybody was so happy? My post described <clears throat> first what great friendships and partnerships I had and how empowering my relationship with Jews has been. And this is a love and a respect and a long time friendship and partnership that I've had with the Syrian Jewish community. But I've had that, that partnership with, obviously in film and television, not just fashion, film and television and financial services and all those things, so I had that. I still have those friends. Ruby called me, why would you go? And he was so upset, he had been drinking, so upset. All my friends are calling me and say, you're supporting Kanye. This is way bigger than Kanye. This is a discussion that, that um, it's unhealthy not to have. Um, we can't, you should fuck him where he breathes. That's Ruby's favorite. He always said that. He said that about Solomon. What, he said it about one of our Syrian partners who was not performing. We were supposed to get our royalty check. And we didn't get him. Probably seven years into our partnership with this guy, he was really going bankrupt. And Ruby wanted to press the button and bankrupt him. And I said, no, no, we can't bankrupt him. We love him. We we'll figured out that person went on to become very successful with us and helped us make a lot of money. So I'm glad we didn't bankrupt him, Ruby. But <laughs> you remember that, Ruby? You wanted to bankrupt, um, and your father financed them in the beginning when they were trouble 40 years before that, 30 years before that, I think. So anyway, it was business. It was just business, and he wanted to bankrupt them. But we were many partners that Ruby helped me to find and meet, and I moved into that community. Kamara almost wanted to buy a house. They live in Ocean Parkway. Um, I remember we were gonna get people to secure because it was so dangerous for them. They were being attacked left and right. So we were getting, believe it or not, Nation of Islam to secure the community to protect them because there was a lot of anti-Semitism at one time. So it's my beloved community. So I also get people calling me and saying, why are you protecting the Jews? What, what the fuck? 
Don't you realize what they're doing? They have a different perspective, obviously, from Ruby. Ruby feels threatened because of his history. And, and the blacks feel threatened because of their history. And so dialogue is the key. What I'm protecting is our future as two people who share a common goal and common threats. We're joined at the hips, the black and, and Jewish communities. White supremacy is bigger than us, much bigger than us. And the threat of uh, going back in the oven or being put back into slavery. Remember, apartheid was yesterday fucking day. Yesterday. Not something that happened. And so anything in history is possible. The Jews have a great saying, never forget. And so they never forget. And they are threatened. And it's why they're so swift. And we are not, because obviously we've forgotten we don't have culture, religion, God. So we let Kanye get away with things or say things that we don't like. But they're afraid. Their history is very recent. Our history is continuous and recent as well, but theirs is horrific. They have family members. It's like as if you had a family member who was a slave, but they have family members who died during the Holocaust. Deep-seated pain. And so the, 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 the takedown looks so horrific to the black community. Some people feel between Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Reverend Jackson and Reverend Sharpton and um, Tamika Maori more recently and you know and Charlemagne the God, Will Smith. The anti-Semite thing has always been held over the head of people who say things that are in fact anti-Semitic or perceived as such. Most of these people do not hate Jewish people, but they've said things and they've apologized in many cases. I certainly, I said earlier, I apologize. I said Holocaust once and they were so mad, not they, this group. Uh, it was a congressman and he tried to engage the ADL and I called up uh, my not friend, but foe, but friend and ally in fighting hate was Abe Fox. And I said, Abe, hey, what am I supposed to do about this shit? I only said that 200 billion animals are made to be born into suffering and that this is destroying the planet. And that each year, the quote unquote holocaust gets bigger he said well the problem is the word holocaust so closely associated and is really completely tied to the suffering of people and it triggers people it hurts people I said okay apology to anyone who's hurt because it's never my intention and my word's intention to hurt and this is why I go to work and I went to work every day when I was the chairman of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding for 20 some odd years and fighting hate. And it was at first just black and Jewish, and then it became Muslim and Jewish when we kind of healed the rift between blacks and Jews. So Ruby has gotten some people in this community who cannot believe that I would say we should educate Kanye. We should not make a public spectacle of his, his, uh, um, takedown. And that in fact we should have the behind the scenes conversation, take him to a Holocaust museum. Black people need to take him to a black history museum as well. You know, some of his statements that have really hurt the black community, he should apologize to them. Some of his apologies have felt to some that disingenuous. He's just trying to navigate and I, I'm not defending him. Some people would obviously obviously think that I'm here to defend him and some people would obviously think that I'm a you know abandoned my own community for the sake of the suffering of the Jews I want to promote love and I want to promote bridge building and I want to promote empowerment so when you see in a community that has so few leaders who are empowered when you see them taken down because of statements they made we want to re Abilitate them and put them back up. We don't want to see our brother dead. We want to see him really do good and erase or perhaps work to
to rebuild many statements that were made. I would call up the, my job, call up the person who made a statement, uh, whether it be against blacks or Jews, and say, go and rehabilitate yourself. Go and do something meaningful. Because the reason it's so important that we rehabilitate people is because we want them to teach their millions, and in Kanye's case, tens of millions of fans to love and not hate. They have tens of millions of fans. It's not about them. It's about their effect, the ripple effect of their words. And the ripple effect, in this case, the perception of the recourse about his words. So Ruby, I have to stay in the middle ground. I have to be the bridge. This is my nature. And this is the goal, the yogi, to promote love. <clears throat> War never helps. And I know that it doesn't matter, even the winner loses, just because you, like I said, someone said, oh, Kanye's done. No, he's not done. It's the millions of people who are now, if you were in the black community or spoke to black leadership, Ruby, you would know the resentment that is brewing that we have to stop and the education process has to start and the partnerships and empowerment and business and in fighting our common enemy, the white supremacy, has to begin. Somebody talking about the Palestinians. Um, speaking of that, in the Syrian community, Jews are not aligned. The Syrians versus the Orthodox versus the Reform Orthodox versus the the uh, Hasidic versus the, you know, there's the Hollywood Jews who have no religion really, they just have a little bit of culture, maybe, maybe not. They all are not aligned. And uh, some would vote, most vote, the way blacks vote, for a progressive agenda. But some, because they care so much about Israel, the agenda of America, the agenda of equality, of, of the agenda that promotes equal health high quality health care, equal high quality uh, education. They like that, but they really want to protect Israel. So they vote, many voted for, for Trump. Stanley Cheerum was Trump's main supporter. He died, God bless Stanley. He was my friend in children's clothing. I didn't talk about that. Lots of children's licenses as well. So Stanley, who owned Young World, Children's World, and he was a big Trump supporter. He died recently, God bless him, he was so nice. He bought the world trade. That's how successful he became. And I watched him rise. It's business. And the business of Israel was a priority of the Syrians. But not of the Orthodox, not of some of the Orthodox friends. Everybody was all over the place. So there's no secret room. I tell this to blacks because I keep hearing. They're, they're plotting. They don't plot. They don't even get along. <laughs> and we don't know each other enough to love each other properly. There is no secret Jewish room. Let me quell that. There is no secret high Jews getting together, organizing to help hurt black people. They're just the people who have a common religion and they're very threatened by the words of Kanye. They don't want anybody to talk about the nuance, the subtlety of how we can really build a bridge. They just want to protect. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like Israel. They're scared to death. That's why they do what they do, uh, not because they just want to hurt dark people, and because of, of racism, but because of survival. So I don't want to. I'm not going to be here to. to uh, I cannot change my position or belief, Ruby. I believe we should educate Kanye, uh, not because of Kanye but hope that he would rehabilitate those people who are saying things who don't have education either. By educating him, we educate. Maybe he will say something that's useful in our bigger, bigger, much bigger agenda, which is to, and desired effect, which is to bring people together. So, I can't say what you want, Ruby. You made me miss yoga, now I gotta blow up. The yoga balloon? The yoga balloon, I blow up this plastic hot balloon when I miss class. I missed class. I was on my bike about to go to class and Ruby called me almost in tears. 
people are attacking him. But he, they know he's my best friend. They're all friends. I can't help it. I can only do what I do. I love all of us. Kanye don't need to apologize. Yes, he fucking does. There were some things he said that I believe was so hurtful and were misguided and are wrong to black people and to Jewish people. Slavery is not a choice. It's not a fucking choice. I would have been like Nat Turner. No, you wouldn't have. You would have been like one of the tens of thousands of people in between each Nat Turner. <laughs> no one escapes. Millions and millions of people could not just get up and fight and be Nat Turner. And who, so there are mistakes, there are things said that we can't stand by, no matter what. No matter how much we want to defend our brother and want to compare him to other people who may have said things off color and maybe uh, didn't deserve the heavy-handed attack. So Yee's heart, I believe, is one of love. We have to bring that out. Or, like most people are doing, denounce him. I denounce him anyway. Denounce his words more than denounce him. Let's hope that he can undo some of the pain that he's caused. And more importantly, we don't want someone to be wearing a Kanye t-shirt and stab somebody or somebody to be uh, uh, using his words. Are you a proud boy? Because they love you right now. Are you a hate part of a hate group? Because I, I just saw something on Twitter that said, fuck the Jews and the niggas. You're on the side of right and goodness. Well, then we do have to abandon you. So, that's it. I'm not, you know, I'm not swift in my judgment. I'm sorry if I can't do exactly the way uh, my friends in the Jewish community want me to. I can condemn hate. I condemn hate speech every single day. And I want to rehabilitate some people who've made horrible misstatements all the time. It's what I did for a living for 25 years. But I have to walk the middle ground because that's what God is calling me to do. You know, so that's it. People who can't see what's wrong about uh, Kanye and people who can't see um, why so much pain is in the black community, I can't, I can't appease you all. This world is polarized. Yes, we love our brother. Ye is our family. Jews are not a friend. Well, that's not true, not to me. They don't control the media, not together. Uh, I'm looking at this, there's so many hateful statements on both sides. And so many angry and you know, people who experience the pain. Um, we don't want to turn into a, a society where they've divided us and, and uh, can easily attack both of us. We want to work together. We want to work with the ADL and with the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, which I helped to start. And with all those foundations, the NAACP and the ADL have worked together, do work together. We have a common enemy in white supremacy. So, um, that's it. And Ruby, again, I'm sorry you're so hurt and hurting because I said those things, but I stand by um, my opinion that it's better to speak to leaders and celebrities behind the scenes. Ask them, how can we fix this? How can we work together? And ask them not to spread, because a little, that when their words are taken out of context, which the media is very good at doing, then they gain Trump. When I said publicly, Donald, the things you're saying are so hurtful, I know you. All your friends are black and Jewish. Why would you say things that hurt Jews and hurt blacks? Why would you do that? And then none of his black friends wanted to call him and correct him. All his Jewish friends, or most all, very upset. And then he just had a bunch of new friends. His new friends were the Proud Boys. His new friends are hate groups. You know, he's a little bit of a narcissist, Donald Trump. So whoever loves him, he loves them. <clears throat> I wonder if they know anybody else like that. So that's it. Ruby, I'm sorry you're in pain. I love you. I hope that all the people who would think that I am standing on one side or the other will understand that this is my heart. I can't back down. I ain't no punk. I 
say what's in my heart. And I say what I really believe is that we have to band together for black empowerment, for the protection of our Jewish partners, for all the things that we believe are righteous and good. And we have to navigate our way to the best path. And the path is dialogue and reconciliation and growth. So that's, that's it. That's the real, you know, uh, that's all I can give you. And um, Stanley Chira, I mentioned, God bless you. To all my family in the Syrian community, very, very strict religious community, very, very supportive of the black community in many ways, and very, very hurt for the past. Very hurt and very threatened by the present and afraid of the future. I do love you and I can see things that you cannot see. That's why I don't make the statements the way you'd like to see them. And to my black brothers and sisters, I've seen the truth in my eyes, the truth is that we have a common destiny and a common good that we have to work on together and we share common enemies and we should be working with our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community to build a better future. Namaste yogis, that's it. <laughs>